Uh, Michael Sorkin is the principal of uh, Michael Sorkin Studio, a design practice devoted to practical and theoretical projects. River in Xiang. Sorkin uh, is uh, issues.
situation. Then, then I'll be really loud.
physical culture, um, then the need for mechanical and supplemental means of transportation is dramatically reduced. So very much believe in the, the idea of the structure of neighborhoods, but a neighborhood, of course, is a neighborhood by convention. You know, modernism went wrong uh, in terms of its attempt to um, quantify the idea of the neighborhood. And all this collaborative about neighborhood units, there will be you know, so many people, four or five schools, you know, all this kind of that's, that's not a neighborhood. Every one of those places is dead. Um, so how to begin to see the idea of neighborhoods without actually these were some ideas, you know, to look at the, the density of construction by way of a, a consistent 20,000, um, to look at the distribution of sense, centers, either via transportation systems or zoning for commercial activities, to maybe be a little prescriptive about some aspects of the physical character of the neighborhood, um, and then to look at the larger distribution of densities throughout the city. And again, this is very preliminary kind of stuff. And we produce horrible period architecture such that everybody was doing in 2000, whatever the hell it was. Uh, this is a city we decided more recently uh, in Turkey. Um, this here is the Bosphorus. This is the Black Sea. This is a place called Riva. Uh, and, um, you know, again, this is for developers, no exotic technology. <coughs> But through the use of common sense, um, this is the reduction we were able to achieve in the footprint of this town. Um, again, uh, uh, essentially a single public transportation loop. Um, again, a very, it's a very compromised project because of uh, issues with ownership and decline. Um, but essentially, the middle is green. There are a series of village or neighborhood uh, uh, components uh, um, around the periphery uh, and a, a, very, a simplified means of public transportation that delivers everybody to within 10 minutes of where they live. Um, I think you all know this kind of stuff. And that, that's the plan that we came up with. Again, um, you know, property may or may not be theft, um, but it is one of the primary um, producers of urban mobility. And the difficulty we had in designing this town um, was that it was owned by seven different developers each of whom demanded to have the same uh, amount of, of development property on the site. So although this is an existing town, um, and there are you know, seasonal beach stuff along here, um, but you know, the, the idea was how, how, how to work within, within the, oh God, I never, heard I never thought I'd hear myself using this phrase, but how to work within the system. Um, so that's what we came up with. Uh, uh, can you hear that? Yeah, so it's a series of villages, each of which is meant to be um, semi-autonomous uh, on the basis of a series of uses. Um, uh, obviously, the sensitivity of the water is crucial in this and other projects that I will show you. Um, water must return to its source purer than it came out, um, an absolutely bedrock. <coughs> Um, one of the ways one does this is um, by looking very carefully at hydrology uh, and the means of mitigating the runoff of the sewage. Um, uh, so then you can see the, the green loops for the public transportation and the yellow for the distribution. Again, um, pedestrian only, pedestrianism only works if it is as convenient or more convenient than everything else. So <clears throat> direct and beautiful routes. Uh, um, and a few, I think there are too many slides here. Uh, and then the thing is, is, is uh, advanced, and we've got the commission for one, to do one of the villages uh, within the project. Um, and these are the means by which one circulates. Uh, and that's the best, the best job of one of the villages. That's the existing river. Um, and again, it's, it's um, a, a lot of conventional urban notions are important. Um, the, the, the meeting of centers, the distance from centers to perimeters, um, and the responsibility taking of each component within the city. Um, Marta mentioned that we've just done uh, a couple of big projects in China. This is a city of half a million um, in this zone, filled with sensitive waterways, but already undergoing horrible uh, development, um, basically uncoordinated. 
Um, so our, our, our basic proposition to them was this. Um, we're going to divide this. There is, in fact, a major trunk highway that runs down the middle of the site. So we propose that they divide the site into a kind of developable area where development is already taking place, and that this remain um, farm. Um, both for symbolic reasons, to provide a certain amount of food stuff, but also to include energy farms, including uh, solar arrays, uh, wind energy, and uh, a fair amount of biomass development. Um, the food got divided again into a series, these are larger than neighborhoods, um, but because of the topography, the nature of the existing condition, the pattern of ownership into a series of subsidies, um, the water, again, the absolutely central organizing principle in terms of uh, remediating the runoff and making sure that the water returns these lakes in a way that would leave them more pristine than before. Um, and then within the subsidies, uh, a series of neighborhood units. Um, in China, one of the big problems, again, um, you remember in that Korean thing, there was this very dense pattern of roadways. Um, and we were just discussing about this 500 by 500 superblock. I mean, in, Ch in China, the superblock is death. Um, it is death to pedestrianism, it is death to the idea of neighborhood, it is death, death to uh, morphological variety. I mean, in general, it's a bad idea. Um, so a lot of the projects we have done there are in order to persuade um, the authorities to do something that scales down from the superblock. You know, against the efficiencies of superblock, I mean, you see you've all read your Jane Jacobs, um, you know, is the patron saint of the uh, And one of her very successful arguments, I think, about the nature of a pedestrianized public realm is that pedestrians will be presented with choices. You know, every 150 feet, you should have a choice uh, about making a turning, about finding an alternative route. Um, again, the worst uh, characteristic of a superblock is the, the, the way that they can use homogeneity. So breaking these up in order to get a much more variegated texture, um, to reduce the size of lots, to reduce variety, uh, I think is a very important study for, for urbanism. So, we did. Again, this is a, this is a place that's that's predicated on first priority to pedestrians, second priority to public means of transportation, and only a last priority. Um, the hell is this? Ah, this is a <laughs> kind of a, a, a green diagram. Um, that's ledger, and, and this is a this is a bit of what it would would look like. Again, you know, you gotta get. In this world of clients and production, you've got to get a little more reasonable. Um, that's as close as we were able to get. But you can see the way in which the green space, the water space, uh, uh, are knit together. The way in which uses are meant to be fairly radical, radically mixed. Um, and the way in which there is a, an alternative presented to pedestrians um, on very short distances. It's the city not conceived as the rational grid, um, but conceived as a kind of a um, And that's one of the cities, again, one of the things you can see here is that in this section, um, with that wash from water to the green space to low density and medium density to the high density and back down, um, takes place over a relatively short distance. Um, and in this direction, uh, the distance to this maximum center is also relatively short. Um, more horrible drawings. Um, there, there are uh, Portofino-like water villages in this place. How fabulous. Um, here's another one of the centers. Uh, and again, same theory going. Um, this one, there, there was a, a, a use that was a given which involved extremely large buildings. So that issue that I mentioned to you before in relation to the weed of the integration of large and small, I think is legible here. Well, um, that's not I think as, as, a, as a kind of image uh, of the water site condition in a city of varying scales. Um, and then there are these you know, small scale areas. Here's that 30 mile long uh, river French first drawing uh, in Xi'an that we did this past summer. And you're the first to see this. Um, kind of narrow. You know, although, although there's density nearby, the river is state of uh, toxic abandonment. So they wanted to recover this river. 
um, for a city that's growing north in a northerly direction um, towards this uh, this river. And, you know, there is the, the kind of second grade uh, red river. So here's the river, which has kind of been uh, recovered uh, as, a, as a year round water. This is a, an existing high speed railroad station. Um, Pay no attention to the lack of building here. Um, this just shows what our intervention is. But this, this core of the city is here. It's moving in this direction. Uh, so this is a, a new uh, central business district. This is an energy park. Uh, that's an academic complex. There's agricultural stuff. Everything they want. Again, there's, there's the overview of this new intervention along the river. Um, uh, here is the master plan showing the district uh, of the thing, um, the basic conceptual idea. You can see this is the core of the city. Uh, the existing airport is here, the new transportation hub is here, and the green things are a series of our special interventions that are meant to see future growth. Um, as I say, this is the first time anybody's seen it, and so of course there are too many slides. But again, the same, the same analytical routine. <coughs> We look at density. We look at a connected system of greenways. Um, we look at a movement system which brings you by means of public transportation within 10 or 15 minutes of your doorway. Um, we propose uh, the extension. I mean, the Chinese were building public transportation like crazy. God bless them. Um, uh, well, they're also building like uh, uh, building highways like crazy. God damn. Uh, uh, and uh, yes. Um, hydrology obviously needs to be considered at a scale which is logical. So um, you can see our project up here. This is the historic walled city of Xi'an, uh, but the, 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 the basin which generates the, the hydrological characteristics of the river is obviously much greater. Um, this is how we propose to remediate the river with a series of uh, essentially passive means, including a sand-based filtration system, um, a series of constructed wetlands, um, and a series of other low energy, low technology means, um, which work very well. Um, this is the, the, the uh, they've done one of these in Japan, a, a water cleaning, uh, sand filtration levee system, um, including also a wetland. Pretty uh, much hydrology. And we were able to produce enough energy in this riverway for one million households, including uh, miniature hydroelectric sites, <coughs> uh, uh, biomass farming, uh, wind farms, so I control. Uh, and here, here are some, some slightly more detailed views um, uh, of the, 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 um, the urban design stuff within Leisure Island, um, oh, it's the Robert Stern Memorial. Uh, Silk Road Historical District. Um, this is an agricultural research station. One of the things we've been doing a lot of work on is uh, vertical agriculture. So this is a place to allow the Chinese to become um, leaders and design a vertical agriculture. Um, there's a Olympics component. Um, Developing this, which you would think 
more logically should become a, a, a green zone. Um, uh, is that they're already building towers here. And somehow to take the heat off that, let's develop this. Uh, and there's pretty good, <coughs> despite this stupid uh, highway, <coughs> Um, there was talk about a, 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 a mechanical, a public truck, a monorail, public transportation site. <coughs> so some of the preconditions were met for the logic of the site. And that was the, the site. So as I'll show you in the, in the diagrammatic slides, um, this is um, self-sufficient in move. Uh, you have all the cars <coughs> discouraged from the highway and left here. Um, the monorail comes here. And a single loop uh, with a hydrogen-powered bus on a you know, three-minute head time um, would distribute the entire population uh, um, uh, around the site with a minute or two off of everything. Um, I think it's about um, 3,500 3, units, but includes sufficient employment, sufficient schools, sufficient clinics. Uh, it, it, uh, the, the waste is treated on site. We're able to collect enough water for all the site things. It's a distributed energy system, um, although it's not the most benign in terms of the fuel it uses, um, nevertheless, it's enough for the site. Um, you know, the, the principle of harmonization doesn't necessarily mean, in this case, that everybody who lives here must work here, must go to school here. Simply that one takes inventory at different scales. So in the same way one might inventory a building in terms of its waste, its energy requirements, what it provides for the people who live and work there, so a neighborhood, so a development, so a city. Um, so uh, that's the ground floor plan, uh, or the plan of grade, showing some of the variety of dimensions and uses. Um, and here are the diagrams, indispensable, I think, uh, to assert in every instance is um, what you Every instance, what you're able to do. Um, so this this is a uh, 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 an evaporative cooling loop. Um, this is a, a, a autonomous energy generation system um, that uh, mixes uh, tri generation plants, solar collectors, uh, as well as a whole series of passive measures. Um, this is the water system, which is both about collection and remediation. Um, and this is a, a kind of speculation about a so-called green level. Um, you know, when you design a big building, there are always a few mechanical floors. We think that the idea of a mechanical floor should be replaced with a green floor, um, which could work uh, you know, for bioremediation stuff, or recycling stuff, or certain kinds of um, sociability. Uh, so this is a kind of continuous green floor in the project. Um, here's a section through one of the buildings showing the, the evaporative cooling, uh, the collection of white rainwater. Again, um, always begin on the device. <coughs> so anything you can do that's passive. You know, I'm always astounded to see that read platinum award given to some building where you can't open the window. It just seems counterintuitive. So this is, this is a little more intuitive. Um, and in fact, in, in, in these buildings, um, the, these maisonettes, um, uh, are exposed on six sides, so they can be ventilated from six directions, you know, the four sides plus top and bottom, on the like sides of innovation. And again, this tower is very mixed in its um, kind of commercial and retail, and, uh, larger scale stuff down here. It's essentially office uh, and loft production, loft kinds of uh, functions here. Here's the green floor, and then here are these stacked maisonettes, and on top is this, uh, 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 water capture close to solar collector. Um, that's a section through the project. Um, that's an elevation of the project. You, you'll see that I'm, I'm very fond of the Asian mountains. So that's, that's a middle of it. Um, so this is tending to this. Or this is tending to this. Uh, there is, uh, this is the objective of this cable car. This is Every, uh, every uh, finest bar mitzvah in Manhattan will be here. Um, this is the it's a hotel. These are the, uh, the apartment buildings. This is the uh, conference and concert center. 
this this age orange is a transit hub with the monorail going out. Um, this is a academic complex where they, you know, one of the big things happening in, in Asia is the franchising of universities. So you know, there are two Australian, one Spanish, three American university branding campuses there. Um, people are really enjoying it. So. Um, that's the uh, that's the single loop of the roadway. Uh, that's the shot back down the hill. And here, this is the kind of motivating. This is the lovely historic part of Penang, and that's what had begun to happen there. Um, and that is going to be displaced here. Um, uh, 2010. We can get it now because you all know this this uh, image of uh, you know Ludwig Hildesheim. Uh, this is the ultimate modern. <coughs> Shows a couple of things. One of them, uh, you know, the, 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 the absolute dementia that comes when your thinking is almost entirely quantitative. Um, second, it shows one of the. Invite me back. I'll give you a lecture about transportation. But suffice it to say um, that, that the, the modern, the modernist idea of transportation is about lamination. It's the same as zoning. That every mode can <coughs> occupy its own space. So, sure, what's, that's that's a kind of superhighway. That must be the subway. There's another subway here. The cars, the foot pedestrians, are stuck up there, you know, in their own space. So somehow, I guess you, you don't see the section, but there must be a kind of <coughs> that it's a shish kebab skewer that puts it all together. But I also show this because you know the classic Hildesheimer diagram that you see. It, uh, architectural history is the one in which you see the building at the 45 degree angle, which guarantees that there is solar access uh, you know, to that building, to, to all these industrial buildings. So we, we got hired to, to do a scheme of 3,500 housing units in like one month. Um, and the one requirement was that every single apartment face south. So the problem was how not to do that. And uh, so we did this. Um, which is a little bit of that, um, but it, it somehow it's that plus the principles plus JJ's. So south is down there. So you can see these kind of rows are essentially facing south. But we took seriously this idea that there must be a lot of choice. So there's a commercial street here, there's a commercial thing here, um, and the rows are constantly being cut either by major incidents for collective activity or by passes. Um, since it, this, this is a bit of an end play because although we show these happy fantasies of green spaces, in fact, it's completely surrounded by factories at the moment, although uh, real estate development will probably take care of that. So that's the thing itself. Um, and then here is some views. Again, um, you know, it's something that you know, they can get built, but um, uh, it's something that tests the limits of home duty. I suspect this is too much, uh, although this, is, this seems like the money shot in terms of the way in which the water could be used both as an amenity and for cooling, uh, the way in which the spaces between these uh, more or less similarly oriented buildings could be developed. Um, too much of muchness. Um, you know, in isolated bits, looks okay. Um, here's, the, here's the entrance to the major shopping street, which bends its way uh, through the, through the uh, 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 long axis of the thing. Um, this is, these are tall buildings along the main uh, east-west street. Um, and here is a project of similar size that we did many years ago uh, on an urban renewal site in um, just to orient, for those of you who've been to New York, see this here? Going to JFK, which is right there. This is an urban renewal site, a cleared site in New York City. Um, and the amazing thing about this site, something little known about New York, is that it's a fantastic beach on the Atlantic Ocean. Um, so here is the New York City subway. It stops there, and you can walk to the beach. Wow. Um, so we were asked to make a study by the Economic Development Corporation about how to develop this site. Okay. Mini lecture about developing sites on the water. Two basic strategies. One is this one, in which you maximize the density of buildings facing the view. 
Um, the ideal building is a very tall, single loaded car where everybody looks at the water. This is Chicago, to be real. Um, or the thankful village along the Bosphorus, um, you have a more indirect relationship to the water. You may be the occasional view, something about the scale, the smell of fish, the crying of gulls, a little bit of sand and carpet when you come on. Um, and so that's the model we took. We did this one. These are existing these towers. There's the subways, there's the beach. There's the subway, there's the beach. So that connection became crucial. Um, a kind of surrounding wall uh, uh, special use buildings, and then, oh, I take back what it said about the super block. And then uh, these, these kind of super block conditions um, for the particular dwelling <laughs> type. Uh, it seems to be the same. Yeah, so, so this, is, this is kind of what it looks like. So, um, broad streets with big bioswales to capture flood and um, These super blocks essentially designed to uh, such that they would be in the interior condition of the flag, uh, and all parking is on the street. These are our building typology 12 apartments, each uh, a greenhouse, living machine, social space in the middle. Uh, that's looking away from the ocean, that's looking towards the ocean. Um, that's the plan, um, pretty traditional, uh, wet units in the middle. And the only thing to remark about this plan is that they're all a little bit different in order to enable the possibility of looking uh, for at least one room in every <coughs> unit uh, down this very wide street and getting on the most of the ocean. Model. Uh, more of a model, and the view back from the beach, quite very quickly now, this is nearby. Um, I saw you have a little bit of what is Heidi Learn more called acupuncture. Uh, so here's some, here's some acupuncture. This is a very poor area of, of New York called East New York. What you can see is that it's got a huge number of vacant lots. Um, very poor, asked by a community organization to make a suggestion. Great community organizations. Um, so it had a lot of vacant lots, and it was a, was, a, was a community that was very interested in urban agriculture, growing food. In fact, they grow food for the homeless on some of these vacant lots. So um, we began to draw, uh, and we drew, and we drew, to produce that drawing. You know, this is a this is what I call a Marcel Marceau drawing. You know, it's feeling their way around. You know, they're, they're swimming in the vacant space. The red is existing, everything else is blue and green. So we sat back and we were very pleased with ourselves. And we realized we had to go show it to these people at that point. Um, so we asked ourselves a question. We don't exactly know what this is or what, what's being produced, but what, what could be a kind of minimum intervention that would produce um, an effect? that we have a vague sense of, but which are ultimately not really clear about. So we proposed this. We said, but what you must do is you must plant one tree in one intersection. Um, and somehow this became incredibly revealed, and we were able to produce the scheme. Uh, again. Um, so if you plant the tree in the intersection, you of course calm the area around it. So the first thing is you plant the tree, and then you produce this low density, semi agrarian uh, um, building typology. You know, row houses, flat for grandma, um, plenty of place to indulge in your kind of urban agriculture. But I think the real discovery, the kind of paradoxical discovery, is that if you do this and this, you also produce this. So this was a neighborhood that had no centers, no traditional shopping streets. Um, no density, no social spaces. So we thought that by selectively lowering density um, in, in, in different parts of the neighborhood, we would force an increase in density in other parts of the neighborhood. So that you know we're still getting the kind of 10 minutes from low density to high, um, but we're producing two things that did not previously exist: uh, a kind of low density area and a high density area. Um, again, this is I think this is the last district project. This is a place in Shanghai where the problem was exactly the superblocks and the fact that the superblock was producing super large projects um, and making it such that you did have to walk 500 feet before you could make a left turn on the floor. 
they were enclaves. So what we have, this is the Sujo Creek, uh, you know, kind of derelict water right? that the, you know, one meant to recapture the area. But also, I mean, everything you can see that's in a color is something that we've added in order to make uh, a kind of suffusion of circulatory possibilities. This is a big transition. So we did that. Um, those are the, the pink cores show the new buildings, but the green and yellow stuff shows this new circulatory pattern meant to defeat um, the overscaled kinds of projects that the superblock uh, super would make. Um, and then, of course, we talked about it today in some buildings that look like mountains. Uh, and and this, is, this is kind of the best drawing to come out of the project. These mountains um, have exactly the correct floor area ratio uh, that the zoning allows in this place. So, uh, unfortunately, you can't do much better than that. And uh, we demonstrated it by the translation, which was, you know, so so. I think we'll do better next time. Uh, and one pillar of uh, uh, So I, I, I think I made a point at the beginning of the lecture um, that one of the means in which difference is going to be guaranteed in cities uh, and environments that are tending uh, to the homogeneous is by one acts of artistic creation, uh, all of which are predicated on your own personal evolution of things. Obviously, you take more and more responsibility for satisfying a broader public as you go up in scale. Um, but I am certainly the first one to argue, argue that if it isn't uh, meretricious in terms of what it does to the environment or the people who use it, the little building ain't going to do anybody any harm. Um, so uh, getting back to my biomorphic roots, um, we did this building in, in a hotel. Uh, source of material. A hotel that's meant to look like a jetty uh, in Tianjin, China. Uh, this is a, this may, may have happened. They, they commissioned a bunch of people to do a hotel. I don't you to admire a hotel. So this, this, this probably is a little more expensive. It's a seven star hotel. You have no idea. How many days can you put in one hotel? <laughs> So we made this jellyfish-like hotel. Um, it has a site plan. Uh, and that's the hotel. These are two sort of smaller club-like hotels. Um, we're capturing some water for you know sufficient cleanliness to be swimming. Um, it's in a place, a kind of a giant mud flat at the edge of Tianjin, where they have a Dubai like fantasies of what to do. Pretty, pretty well along those drives. Uh, you know, it has a suck. So a giant, a giant jellyfish tank, bar, karaoke. Um, uh, Sahalik furniture. Plenty of, plenty of bathrooms. Uh, and uh, it looks especially lovely um, when the stars are out. And it's top stars.